the ultimate secret weapon against motorbike theft has been revealed. It's buying the biggest, heaviest motorbike you possibly can. I mean, fair play, bikes these, you're awful people, but that's a damn good job with ratchet straps. Look at that, one in nine of those is stolen. You can never be completely safe. I had to bear with me today because a lot of this is just going to be me reading from a laptop. This is going to be based on a press release I saw today, but also I'm going to bring in some other data and stuff like that. So it's basically just going to be me talking about numbers. But don't worry, I'm going to go and write this in a bit and try and tie that all together. And, you know, because I don't want everyone just to look at my face for that long because I wouldn't wish that on anyone. I've got my legs out as well again. So apologies for that. So we'll try and keep this as brief as we can, get on the bike and, and talk a bit more. So this press release is from a company called Loop, who called themselves a specialist for automotive PR and communications agency. And the main, actually, the, their main focus on it is about basically all these sort of emerging Chinese brands uh, being at the biggest risk of theft. My main takeaway from it, though, is not that. It is that the proportionately least likely bike to be stolen in the UK is as you probably gathered actually from the beginning, was the Triumph Rocket 3. So Leap, what uh, this agency did is they did a freedom of information request with the DVLA, crunched all the numbers, and, and this is what they've come up with. So yeah, proportionately the most stolen mod, uh, model in the UK is the Honda SH350. Uh, and yeah, one in nine of those is stolen, which is, which is incredible. But the Triumph Rocket 3, one in 1,569. And that's, that's not just the least, it's the least by a long way as well. So the next after that is the BMW R1200 RT. Oh, look, Honda VFR 750, one in 1,059. Yeah, I have a VFR 750, so yeah, that's great news. No one wants to steal it, apparently. Um, but we'll get back to that eventually so we'll, let's, let's, let's work our way through this so those, those are kind of my main takeaways is I, I guess because if you get something big and heavy it's difficult to lift up and chuck in the back of the van because obviously you know you can put things like disc locks or you know whatever in your bike but you know if a couple of burly lads come along there's nothing to stop them just lifting it and chucking the back of the van especially if it's parts of london street obviously we see a lot of theft going in london uh, what i should say actually as well is at the end of this some of the other data we'll look at it will show actually that theft isn't quite as bad in the uk as you might think it's getting better so that's good news but we'll, we'll get back to that so we'll let's have a look through this yeah challenger brands entering the market from modes uh, from china elsewhere proportionally higher risk of being stolen last year yeah we've been through that but the most stolen bike in the uk is um, by pure numbers, the Honda PCX, and that's really by count of its pop popularity because yeah, Honda sells thousands of those. It yeah, um, often is topping all the near, near the top of um, most bought motorcycles in the UK. So. 1,866 thefts reported in 2024. So yeah, a lot of bikes being nicked, but yeah, there are 550,000 of them in the country. So yeah, that is to be expected. So yeah, here's the list what we've got. So. Honda Pete, so this is most stolen just by pure numbers alone. So yeah, PCX at the top, uh, Yamaha GPD 125. Interestingly, the, the SH350 I mentioned earlier, it is not in the list of the most stolen, mo stolen motorcycles, but it is in the proportionately most stolen motorbikes at the top of that. But yeah, if you go by pure numbers alone, it's uh, yeah, the PCX, Yamaha GPD 125. So actually they're all, well, almost all of them are some scooters and learner legal 125s with one exception yamaha mt07 that's quite interesting so yeah 253 of those stolen last year obviously nowhere near the amount of the stuff at the top of the list but sixth most stolen motorcycle of 2024 yeah yamaha mt07 there you go and the only big bike that's uh, that's in there why am i being attacked by wildlife and yeah most stolen motorcycle brands it's no surprise to honda because you know, they sell more bikes than anyone else yamaha close second again they sell a lot of bikes that's understandable so this is where it gets interesting because then if you look at the proportionately most stolen brands um it's a completely different list you have tiang ying no i have no idea either uh, a few here i have heard of so sinis obviously i've heard of motorini suron i can't say i'm too surprised by by that one <laughs> um yeah a lot of Chinese manufacturers and a completely different list, basically, to, yeah, a completely different list to um, the most stolen just by numbers overall. So look at that, Tiang Ying, one in eight stolen in 2024, that's astonishing. One in 18 for Xiaoju, I don't know. Uh, Suron, one in 28. But then if you look at the, so this is now the proportionately least stolen brands, um, yeah, we've got Suzuki, Rollinfield, Kawasaki, Ducati, good news, because I've got one of those as well. 
Um, and the least of all is BSA, one in 3,217. Uh, yeah, and here we've got the proportionately most stolen models. Um, yeah, we won't, won't dwell on this too much, but yeah, P6 is in there as mentioned, and the, yeah, what's, yeah. So a lot of scooters basically, again, because presumably because they're just easy to, to stick in the back of a van. And now we get on to the proportionately least stolen motorcycles. So uh, as mentioned, Rocket 3 is, is the best of all of those. But yeah, really most of them, or a good chunk of them, are 1000 cc Rover at Honda CB1300. I'd quite like one of those actually. Maybe I go and buy one. GSX 1400, uh, CBR 1100. Ah, so that'd be the that'd be the Blackbird, I think, won't it? Yeah, CB 1100 XX Super Blackbird. Really catchy name. Uh, I want to buy one of those as well. It's basically all just stuff I want to buy, including Honda v, the Honda VTR 1000 actually. Triumph Thruxton. Um, yeah, Tramp Rocket 3 and yeah, BMW, R, BMW R1200 RT, another another big boy. So we've got a quote here from uh, Alex Kefford, who is the head of editorial at Loop. So he says, motorcycle thieves continue to target scooters and 125s far more than high performance sports bikes. Um, Honda P6 may be unlikely to find itself at the top of these charts, but then it is Britain's the fourth most popular bikes. When we look at the figures in proportion, a very different picture emerges. Yeah, yeah, well, as, as we've said, uh, there's another quote here, which was quite interesting. So talking about the Chinese and emerging brands, it's like owners of these bikes uh, might think these low pri their low prices make them less of a target in comparison to more exotic machinery. However, the evidence suggests they are more at risk uh, of becoming an unfortunate, unfortunate statistic. Their lightweight and twist-and-go convenience makes them popular with commuters, but also makes them easy to hustle away or lift into the back of a van. Oh yeah, large capacity bikes left re relatively untroubled by the criminal fraternity. As to underline this point, the, the Triumph Rocket 3, featuring the world's largest production motorcycle engine, uh, until Triumph usurped it with the Triumph Rocket 3. Oh yeah, so this this is uh, something I should mention. Um, the least stolen is, it's, this is the old Rocket 3 of Roman numerals, not the new Rocket, which is through the number. Just to, just to clarify, yeah, finds itself hold of another record, this time as the least propor proportion, the propor proportionately least stolen bike in the UK. Apparently I can't read. Saying about classics as well are, are not stolen at, are, are much at all. Uh, having looked at BSA being the uh, least stolen brand of any of them. Uh, go big or go old seems to be the advice if you want a bike that stands a good chance of still being where you left it, where you return. That said, there are plenty of bikes that weren't stolen at all last year and therefore don't make it into these figures. That is a good point, uh, despite being inc incredibly popular. Top of that list is the Kawasaki ZX750, of which there are nearly 5,000 in the UK, yet none were reported stolen uh, last year. XL650 Transalp as well, most theft, theft resistant bike of 2024, um, while Harley Davidson has more zero theft models than anyone else. I'm sure it's nothing to do with the fact that no one wants them. Uh, so obviously, you know, that's a lot of bikes being stolen. That sounds pretty depressing. You know, anecdotally, as a, as a bike owner, I hear about fellow bike owners having their stuff getting nicked in it, and it's quite depressing, frankly. But the good news is the figures aren't actually quite as terrible as you might think. Well, they are. They're not great. I won't lie. But um, there was a, a report from the MCIA, which is the Motorcycle Industry Association. That came out last October, November. So... Um, yeah, a little while ago now, but still very relevant. So that showed that uh, year to date at that point, thefts were down year on year about 8%. And actually since 2017, thefts have dropped by about 20%. Now, obviously, you know, one motorbike being stolen is too much. So yeah, by that point of the year, um, not even at the end of the year, thefts were already up to 15,832. Oh, actually that's only to the end of August. So that was when they got the data, they reported on it um, in October, November. But yeah, that was only up to August. That's 15,800 bikes. That's quite a lot. And actually, if you look at how many, 224, how many cars stolen? Let's have a look actually, how that compares to cars. <music> In the whole of 2024, about 60,000 cars were stolen. So if you think about how much of traffic motorcycles make up, proportionately, a lot more are getting nicked. But yeah, the numbers are going down. So this is from Tony Campbell, who is boss of the MCIA. The decrease in theft is a clear indication that coordinated industry-wide efforts are yielding positive results, hoping, uh, providing hope for even lower theft rates in the future, uh, and hopefully a reduction in insurance premiums. Obviously, this is important for all of us because you know we'd all like to be paying less for insurance, I'm sure. So one of the things that the MCIA has done is uh, come up with this sold secure rating, which is is from one to five stars. And if you get the whole five stars, you need uh, vehicle market system. System, an alarm system, an immobilizer, uh, a steering lock that meets a UNECE 62 standard, 
uh, and a vehicle tracking system with a subscription. That's the bit I'd like to talk about next, actually, because the recovery rates for uh, bikes for trackers are actually incredible. There's something, for, for most of them, they're above 90%. And actually, only a few weeks ago, there was a story uh, from Bike Track. Because this is the great thing about having a tracker, is you're not just protecting yourself, you're potentially protecting someone else who hasn't even got a tracker. So what happened is Bike Track, one of their users, had a BMW, what was it? So it's a BMW, I think it was an R1250 GS, and was stolen from Richmond in London. Uh, it was tracked to uh, Tilbury Docks. Yeah, bike track then alerted the authorities, proved that one of the nicked, proved that there was a nicked bike in this um, container, which was about to get loaded on a ship and go who knows where a lot of um, stolen vehicles go to um, Democratic Republic of Congo, apparently. Uh, and the UAE is quite popular for stolen uh, stolen cars and car parts, so I don't know about motorbikes. So yeah, it was going to go wherever, but got intercepted by the police. And they found not just the GS there, but a total of 20 bikes. There's a brilliant picture of, um, I think it's a uh, BMW S1000R literally hanging from the roof. They've ratchet strapped it. I mean, fair play, bikes these, you're awful people, but that's a damn good job with ratchet straps. Look at that, they've got it uh, hanging from the ceiling with uh, something else as well that's got, look, looks like a nice uh, Termigoni can on it. So um, yeah, pretty good. So Tilbury Box, and actually the, the investigation there led to the recovery of another five bikes on top of that. So actually this goes back to something else the MCIA said uh, last year while um, it says that while it, whilst this is encouraging news about the, uh, the reduction in thefts overall, the volumes of stolen motorcycles being recovered post-theft has dropped significantly, meaning it is uh, likely more are being shipped abroad. MCIA are working closely with authorities to see what can be done at the main ports in order to understand the scale of the problem and put measures in place, uh, put in place measures to combat the issue. Um, that's actually quite interesting because um, Jaguar Land Rover, obviously, you know, Range Rover is being stolen. That's been in the news quite a lot. So they've actually been helping fund policing of the docks. Yeah, one of those um, one of those docks is Tilbury because yeah, it does seem to be that um, yeah, a lot of this stuff is is going abroad. Half the time they don't actually want the vehicle itself; it's more about the parts. So yeah, trackers important because you're protecting not just yourself but potentially other people. Other stuff you could do, obviously, physical security, ground anchors. Um, really just making life as difficult as possible for thieves. Obviously, I half joked about just getting a really heavy motorcycle, but yeah i wouldn't go out and buy one just for that reason but hey if you do have a triumph rocket three whether it's with roman numerals or the number three you can rest a bit easier that night knowing that it's probably not going to get chucked in the back of a van this bike weighs 230 kilos so but it is also kind of classic so yeah it's a bit heavy and it's a bit classic so i hope that means that no one's going to nick it because it's the most valuable thing that's in my garage and yeah i kind of don't really want it to get nicked uh, but we'll do, we'll ride and we'll talk some more about bike theft if anyone's still watching or I have just bored you with data and if I have, um, sorry. So I guess uh, what I'd like to do now is throw this open to you. So have you been a victim of motorbike theft? Uh, you know, what do you do to prevent it? Because that's the thing, it is great news that thefts have been coming down but they are still very high you are still highly likely the statistics tell us to fall victim to it so yeah great that manufacturers and the mci and blah blah are doing what they can to get things down but yeah in the meantime keep yourself protected because especially if you're out and about you know road motorbikes at the train station for example or you know outside the office particularly if it's in london you just want to make sure that Yours is ideally the best protected bike there. You're never going to be able to do enough to stop these entirely. I think the problem with the advent of these battery operated angle grinders is you can never be completely safe. If a thief is determined enough, you know, they'll they'll be able to have it. You just got to make sure that your bike is the most protected wherever it is, um, you know, on your street, in the you know, car park, whatever, or at the very least, make sure it's at least not the worst protected because, you know, that's going to be the one then that, unfortunately, will go. So, yeah, something a bit different. Um, you know, I saw the press release and found that interesting. Thought you might do as well. So, yeah, if this uh, rambly vlog wasn't too off-putting for you, please do subscribe to the channel and like the video. And, um, yeah, I'll see you next time for something hopefully a bit less rambly with some direction. Bye.